Welcome back to Genetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about Robertsonian translocations, we're going to talk about what causes them and when they're likely to occur, and then talk about a genetic condition, actually, which is Down syndrome, uh, which can be produced as a result of a Robertsonian translocation. Okay. Uh, but before we actually go into this, I want to talk a little bit about Down syndrome and the most common cause, because it turns out that Robertsonian translocations, it's actually pretty rare that this can actually lead to Down syndrome. It's only about 2 to 4% of cases. So with Down syndrome, it has another name. It's also called trisomy 21, and that's because Down syndrome is an aneuploidy of chromosome number 21. That means that the individual who's affected by Down syndrome has three copies of of chromosome 21. And of course, a normal healthy human being is supposed to only have two copies of every chromosome. Okay? Now, the most common cause of Down syndrome, or trisomy 21, is a non-disjunction event. So when you have fertilization of the egg by a sperm cell, we know that the sperm and egg respectively are supposed to carry only one copy of every chromosome. So if we're talking about chromosome 21, for example, the egg, or really it would be a secondary oocyte when it's fertilized, should only carry one chromosome 21. Likewise, the spermatozoa should also contain only one copy of chromosome 21. And so when fertilization occurs, the pronuclei fuse, and you get the mature zygote, has two copies of chromosome 21. One from the mother, one from the father. Now, if there's a non-disjunction event prior to fertilization, that means that one of those gametes, whether it's male or female, will somehow end up carrying two copies of that particular chromosome. So let's say, for example, the sperm cell is still carrying one copy of chromosome 21. And then let's say the secondary oocyte, by some mechanism, carries two copies of chromosome 21. When fertilization occurs, you can do the simple math, 2 plus 1 is 3, and so that individual will be affected and have three copies of chromosome 21, and that is trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Now, the non-disjunction event I just described is the most common cause of Down syndrome, okay? But there's another one called a Robertsonian translocation. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. Now, the vast majority of cases of Down syndrome in offspring are due to non-disjunction events that occur prior to fertilization. However, a minor cause, but still important and clinically relevant, of Down syndrome, and of course other diseases, is the Robertsonian translocation. Now, again, this is an event that we're talking about occurring in the parents, the parental strain, if you want to call it that. And it generally does not affect the parental strain, meaning you don't see a negatively affected phenotype in the parents. You observe the negatively affected phenotype in the offspring, okay? Just like you would see in a non-disjunction event, because this event we're assuming is occurring at the germline cells. Those are the cells that are creating the gametes, respectively, in males and females. So here's a diagram explaining what a Robertsonian translocation is. Now, a Robertsonian translocation occurs between two acrosomal chromosomes. So what is an acrosomal chromosome? Well, first of all, let's talk about a little bit of the anatomy of a chromosome. Okay? Chromosome is just a DNA molecule. And every DNA molecule has a centromere. Now, remember, the centromere region is the region of the of the DNA molecule where it will essentially synapse with its homologous chromosome during, let's say, mitosis or meiosis. Okay? Now, in some chromosomes, which we term acrosomal, the centromere is shifted pretty far toward one end, pretty skewed, such that one end of the centromere is really, really short, and the other end is really long. Now, if we're talking about anatomy of a chromosome, in any one of them, regardless of whether or not it's acrosomal, the short end is the P arm, and the longer end is the Q arm. Okay? So we could say that in an acrosomal chromosome, the P arm is really, really, really small. In fact, in some cases, it's even, I found this online, negligibly observable. And even the P-arm in this picture right here is pretty exaggerated. It's actually a lot smaller than this um, in real life. They've, of course, made it a little bit bigger so we can see it on the picture. But let's assume that this right here, this blue one, this is chromosome 14. We'll say this green one is chromosome 21. Now, notice what happens here. 
Okay. The gist of this step is that one of the chromosomes, let's say number 14, breaks in the middle of the p-arm, and then the other one, this would be chromosome 21, breaks a small distance into the q-arm. Okay. And then the two large fragments from chromosome 21 and 14 respectively, they actually join each other. And so you end up with one really tiny piece that relatively speaking is a lot smaller than they've shown here. And then this huge conglomerate of chromosome 14 and 21. And if we assume that this process occurs in the germline cells, it won't affect the parent, right? Because to affect the parent, it would actually have to occur in every single somatic cell, or at least a big fraction of them, to actually see an observable effect, okay? It's only in the germ cells. In the parent's germline cells, where there's the manufacturing of gametes for the purpose of fertilization, there's also DNA replication. And having this conglomerate chromosome right here makes it more likely that you'll actually replicate an extra copy of one of these chromosomes, whether it be 21 or 14, whichever one is actually involved in the Robertsonian translocation. And if you happen to replicate an extra copy of one of these, let's say it happened to be 21, then that gamete will have two copies of chromosome 21. And so when it gets fertilized, let's say it's the secondary oocyte by a sperm cell carrying only one, it'll still have three in the zygote, three copies of that chromosome. And so for this reason, generally when there's a Robertsonian translocation, you only see the negatively affected phenotypes in the offspring. And even though Robertsonian translocations only account for about 2 to 4 percent of cases of Down syndrome, or trisomy 21, they are still clinically relevant. Just understand that the vast majority of cases of the disease are a result, actually, of non-disjunction events that occur uh, during gametogenesis. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention before we conclude this video is just a little bit about Down syndrome's mechanism, okay? And that's that its mechanism is not well elucidated. We do know that it is a result of having three copies of chromosome 21, but how that actually contributes to the signs and symptoms of Down syndrome, no one knows yet. So it's still an area of ongoing and active research. However, there is one interesting thing I want to show you about the breakage step um, that you wouldn't actually see in the non-disjunction event, because a non-disjunction event is just three clean copies of chromosome 21. Okay? Notice here that on the P-arm of this chromosome, and then uh, near the centromere on the Q-arm of this other chromosome, notice that it's breaking. Okay? Uh, as far as anyone knows, there's not really any set point where it breaks. It doesn't break in between genes. So there's a good chance that when this breakage occurs, it could actually occur in the middle of a gene. And if you interrupt a gene and splice it with a new DNA molecule, you don't have a complete protein or at least a complete gene. And so the protein, if it's even still expressed, is probably going to be non-functional. Now, again, we don't see that in non-disjunction events. But could this actually contribute to the propagation of Down syndrome? Who knows? And then also it could be involved in the development of other conditions that are known to be a result of parental Robertsonian translocations. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And hopefully this video made sense to you and you learned a lot. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.